How's it going, people? Well, I got another piece of literature from my friends. Piece of something, anyway. Yeah, what is wrong with the world, except that it seems to be, besides the fact that it seems to be crumbling in this picture. That's scary. Same guys as the last, so this is going to be quality. And we're going to have some simpler times with that. This is not what we are all after. Yeah, I just found an easier way to get it yeah, at the store. <sighs> I have not read this in advance because I thought I'd share the surprise with you. It might change your life and mine. It might convince me. That last one came close. Convince me of something. Alright. Ah. Let's begin. Charles R. Brown, not the peanut, <laughs> um, once uh, head of the Department of History at Roanoke College, answered the question this way. So we're going to quote mine this guy, because he's saying something you can use. Practically everyone admits that the world is sick. But just what ails it continues to baffle all the doctors. In fact, no one up to the moment has offered any genuinely intelligent diagnosis. Yet there are thousands of remedies being urged and tried. Of course, many people have attempted to tell us what ails the world, but their suggestions are usually prejudiced by their own personal interests. But you're not that way, are you? Whoever wrote this. And for that reason, fail even to approach a good diagnosis. Damn doctors. Uh, all right. All right, we got a quotation here. Uh, Men alone of all creation is considered capable of devising and improving standards of living. Yeah. Every generation since the advent of men has been charged with the responsibility of maintaining a high standard of morals. And history testifies strongly that whenever man has rejected his morals, his civilization has suffered accordingly. Loose morals have undoubtedly contributed much to the downfall of all civilizations. <sighs> Previous to ours. And loose morals. Uh, and loose moral living, if not corrected, will most certainly wreck our world. So that's why they got to interfere with everybody else's business. They think the planet's in peril if somebody puts their wee-wee in the wrong place. 
behind closed doors or whatever. You fill in the blanks <laughs> any way you want. <sighs> what is wrong with the world? It is morally and spiritually sick. And no one seems to have the courage to administer the cure. Pray tell, what might that be? Therefore, the challenge to all people must be to get ready to stand on their own feet in simple, rugged, and honest living. If our civilization is to survive, there might be some other factors involved, you know. Just saying. Alright. I don't know, this is pretty scary. Um, the danger from without is small. The danger from within is becoming huge. That happens. <laughs> it will take a great deal of courage to disentangle our lives from the modern meshes which are gradually pulling us under and to stand again. Four square for lofty thinking. Yeah. Virtuous living and honest dealings. That would be nice, especially from religious Some people, you know, it's just part of their operating system. And they just deal with life. <laughs> Don't think about it until they have to. You know, like once a week, maybe. And in certain conversations. I don't know. I grew up in a household like that. All right. Ah, huge. But such is the price if man, man's divinest mission is ever to be fulfilled. Ah. These are eloquent words, and in many respects, they speak truth while in others they manifest a sad lack of real understanding of the issues that confront the world today. The world is morally and spiritually sick. The symptoms of violence, drug addiction, Lawlessness. You could have just said that. Um, lack of morality. Abortion. All prove we are in the last days of grace. Oh, we're in the days of grace. I forgot about that. like those of Noah, when violence and corruption filled the earth and brought forth the judgment of God and yeah, torrential temper tantrum. He's perfect. He just fucked up, but he's perfect. <laughs> First, he lets the devil in the garden. And he doesn't warn his innocent creations, but punishes them anyway. And then he drowns his creation, and that's the, the 
an, a mega abortion. Think of all the fetuses. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. A little tangent. Uh, sin is the root cause of all these dreadful symptoms that plague the world today. is only one remedy for that root cause. It is found in the once crucified, now risen and glorified Jesus Christ, the Son of God. A mere return to morality <coughs> sorry, and outwards outward change of conditions, sorry, small print, bad eyes, uh, change of conditions will be neither effective in solving the world's problems, nor even possible, wait, problems, nor even possible while the underlying cause of sin remains untreated. All the world's problems. Everything. Wow. God, we human beings are so damn important. <laughs> yeah, it's all about us. <laughs> Nothing could have happened without us. I mean, maybe five or six days before us, but that's about it. And that was only because they were practicing. He was practicing until they got to us. Because we're so fucking bitch. <sighs> it makes sense when you don't think about it. <laughs> or if you think about it like this. With Bible eyes. Where you just skip over those parts like you didn't even see them. Little cognitive dissonance. I know. I had family try a religious intervention on me when I was a my mid-twenties, and I told him some about the nativity problems in Joseph's house in Bethlehem, and a relative of mine ran to my grandfather's Bible, turns to find it in the Bible, looks up at me with this look on her face like, how did you put that there? That was never there. Yeah. Sorry, another tangent. Little, little my time. <laughs> little me time, excuse me. Uh, right. There must be on man's part repentance. And of his sin to God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until that point is reached, there can be no remedy. For the, for the devastating ills of the world. Wow. You mean like hurricanes and all that? You tell me Pat Robertson's been right all this time? All right. God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. For he has appointed the day when he will judge the world in righteousness by Jesus. A fact that he gave assurances of when he raised him from the dead. That's from Acts 17, 30, 31. Bad combo. Glossy page, small print, and poor lighting, and bad eyes. But I'm going to soldier through because I don't want you to get this. I want to get this information to you folks because you got some important things to think about now. I'm trying to help out. All right. Oh. <laughs> the 
crux of the whole matter is man's treatment of the Son of God. I didn't do it. Didn't even ask for it. Wasn't consulted. It's like getting sent a bill, you know, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't agree to this. No matter how lofty the moral standards or how spiritual the principles adopted, until men have made the Son of God their Savior, they are lost. And so is the uh, barrier reef and all those other you know, problems. Uh, global warming. Stop sinning, damn it. You're heating the planet up. See, it all does make sense if you're fucking insane. <laughs> so, little, little outburst there. Uh, had a hard, had a difficult day. Fortunately, I have a couple of these in reserve. Haven't read the others either. They look fun. All right. <laughs> Dear reader, what about you? you concerned about what ails the world? Christian soldiers marching as the war. Uh, do you search for an answer to its symptoms? Ask a witch doctor. They can dig through some rabbit entrails and go, haha, there we go. Pay me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Getting my mythology mixed up. <sighs> if you're concerned, that's good. But what about your own soul? No matter what level of morality you seek to pursue, or what level of spirituality? You think you have obtained whatever level. Sounds like Dungeons and Dragons, doesn't it? Ah, roll those dice. All right, you just went up a level. Getting confused again. I keep forgetting this shit's real. And that other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Depends on what box you're in looking out from. Uh, right. If you haven't repented of your sins to God and trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have not addressed the great need of your soul. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14.6 I prefer Austin 316. Uh, we urge you to get right with God yourself through Jesus Christ, the middleman. He's a buffer. So the big G don't get bothered too much. He'll pass it on if it's something he can't do. And that's nothing. Yeah. All right. Uh, then you will have nothing to fear as the bitterness of a home with him. Fear as the blessedness of a home with him and glory bright, uh, brightens before you after you're dead. You can collect if you played the game right. Uh, 
He died on the cross at Calvary to put away your sins by the sacrifice of himself to himself. That's the ultimate recycling. Hey, he even took his body with him, man. He's not going to litter. Yeah. Yeah. There, he shed his precious blood, by which your redemption can be accomplished. 1 Peter 1, 18. That's pretty convincing. You know, I mean, they could substitute, um, let's say, Jesus with, oh, let's say, Osiris. And it reads the same and means about as much. Your destiny and mine thus depend on whether or not we put our trust in him as our personal savior. And no, no doubt, if you get the over, upper hand, you can come back to, go back to oppressing people who disagree with you. Yeah, that's the danger. Hey. May God grant that each of us, concerned by the events of the day, may be searched out in the presence of God and lead to repentance. Should have done it already. And faith in the Blessed One whom God gave and took and got back and gave again. Not at all circular. His only begotten son. Yeah, I think, um, didn't Amun-Ra also have an only son? And, uh, let's see. Then there's Apollo and Thor, all sons of gods, Hercules. He got, uh, he got to sit at the right hand of Zeus forever. Took his body, I believe. Blessed one, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. After you're dead, you won't die again, uh, but have everlasting life. And that's John 3 16. And that's by JBR Adapted, it says in parentheses there. And I will supply the info wherever it goes. I hope you learned something. And if, if this changed your life, please post a video testimonial. Because, you know, I'm still impressionable. Let me know if you learned something. Please share. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having, because I want you to, and that should be enough uh, to alter reality, to suit my needs and wants. Yeah. Well, anyway, I hope this helps, and um, I have more.